The king and queen have just returned from burying their son. But before they get the opportunity to mourn, duty calls. Hi, I'm author Sarah Faxon. I'm here to read a section from my latest book, Foreign and Domestic Affairs, A Political Fantasy, which is the sequel to my first novel, The Animal Court. Gertrude's just returned from the cemetery after burying her son and has gone to see her children to see if she can comfort them, knowing that in this time of sadness, they'll need their mother's warmth. Right then, she said after briefly recalling aspects of a story she wished to share with them, anything that she could do to take their minds off of what was happening. It struck her in this moment as particularly important to tell the children this one. What with the rising tensions between their country and their neighbor, her own mother's native lands happening. After hearing rumors that this story was being told differently in Reichland as of recent times, Gertrude found it imperative to maintain the tale in the form of old, as it was one of brotherhood, not of rivalry. Leaning toward her children, Gertrude began the tale. Long ago, the two great lands, Fetenka and Reichland, were joined. They were coupled together along our southwestern shoreline. The country, then known as Aranya, was ruled by a marvelous king and queen, who were fair-minded but firm with their courses. The people admired them and respected their words. The only issue that perturbed the nation was that the royals had borne no heirs. There was much grumbling and many heated disputes about what would happen were the king to die without an heir. The monarch feared that his lack of an heir would eventually tear their kingdom apart. After years of prayer and hope, the queen conceived, and she birthed a perfect set of twins. Gertrude's own twins smiled upon hearing this, feeling immediate empathy toward the two, regardless of their involvement. The twins were identical boys, and they grew up to be charming, intelligent, honorable gentlemen. Their parents watched them grow with great pride. But, as the king grew older, choosing the heir to the throne became more and more difficult with each passing day. Both the young men held favorable and equally great characteristics. Both would make great kings. Baffled by this notion, the king had countless secret tests to be administered to his sons to see if somehow one would outweigh the other. But after months of these challenges, the results remained the same. The king did not know what else to do, so he decided that his sons would have to face it out themselves. Though not in a duel of swords, for he could not stand the possibility of one of them injuring the other. Knowing that they were equally gifted in intellect as well, the king did the last thing that he could imagine. He brought his two sons to the heart of the kingdom, where he commanded them to a tug-of-war duel. Whether his sons brought the flag across the, whoever of the, his sons brought the flag across the chalk line would be the heir to all of Zaranya. So, reluctantly, from embarrassment, the twins took hold to both ends of the rope, and tugged as hard as they could. On either side of the line, flocks of people joined to see which boy would be their next king. The king hovered over the chalk line, watching the flag intently, but the sh marker simply would not move. Suddenly, the rope split right in the middle. Both boys fell to the ground, even that at the same time. The king was so furious from this awe-inspiring yet frustrating predicament that he unsheathed his sword, held it high above them, and struck the ground. The crushing weight of the blow sent a loud crack reverberating throughout the lands. The ground began to quake, and the lands parted right where the king's blade struck. The once large land split into two islands that drifted apart from one another, each with a brother to rule over them safely. And that, my dears is how Reichland and Vitenka came to be. So that's just a sneak peek into my book, Foreign and Domestic Affairs, which is available now at the San Diego Public Library. Thank you all so much, and cheers, dears.